Hallelujah. Well, we've been talking about my in Christ righteousness. And I shared with you last week how that it is important that we understand how righteous we are. Everything about you as a believer is attached to your righteousness. And I'm not going to try to jump ahead on my notes, but I want you to turn to um, where I want you to go this morning. Turn to Romans chapter 4, I believe. Yeah, Romans chapter 4, verse 25. And we're going to see, we talked about Abram and how the covenant got cut and how that we were drafted into the, or grafted rather, into the covenant through Jesus. There is no covenant without Jesus because the covenant wasn't cut with us, it was cut with Jesus. Abram participated because he believed God. We are participating because we believe God. We don't, we don't have an a edge on the covenant apart from our faith in God. Romans 4.25 reads like this. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So in other words, Jesus was sacrificed for our sins. And he was raised so that we could be justified. Now, that may not mean much to some people sometimes when you hear it like that. But if you ever had to stand in the gap for somebody's life, you kind of get a clue of what Jesus did for us. He stood between eternal death and damnation and us living. And then give us the choice to choose which one we want. Now, you can't get it better than that. Now, if your life is looking hellacious, it's because you made some wrong choices. So we're not going to blame that on what he did or did not do. Jesus did everything he was required to do to make us free. He did it. Now, we got to make right choices because we've been justified. Now, if you indeed are born again and washed in the blood of the Lamb and you received him as Savior, you indeed have been justified We've been commanded. Look at Matthew 6, 33. And I think part of the problem, I know I'm getting ahead of some of my notes, but I just want us to go there because I, I, just, I want you to go home with a thought this morning, understanding that it's not optional that we understand righteousness. Look at verse, you know it, because we use it a lot for money, but let's, let's see what else can it be used for. Matthew 6, look at verse 33. Okay. This thing wanted to do something different. Matthew 6. There we are. But what does it say in Matthew 6? Let's read it together. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So the things only get added as I understand righteousness. Okay. That might have went over your head. Because most of us don't make righteousness a priority. We make uh, healing. Or we make, I need money. Or I need my relationship healed. All that's attached to your righteousness. And the less you know about how right you are with God, the easier it is the devil to manipulate all the other areas of your life. When we get our right standing right in our thinking, it's going to revolutionize your whole life. There are going to be some things about you you're going to say, you mean I had, I could have been doing this all the time. Absolutely. Money will start flowing into your life. You won't have to struggle when you understand your righteousness. See, all the four fingers in your hand, all, all five of them, but without this thumb, see the thumb, I said the four fingers because I'm thinking about the thumb. The thumb, you try lifting up something without your thumb. See how easy it is to do. Oh, yeah, these are strong, but they need a thumb. This is the foundation of the, of the hand. Righteousness is your foundation. 
And if you don't understand how right you are with God, you will accept a lot of stuff. And these other areas of your life, they, they're, they're plagued by inconsistency and failure. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that next Sunday. But I want you to go home with a, a thought. How right I am with God. When Jesus died in my place, he made me right with God. He made me right with God. And you don't have to get any, I'm going to fix a word, you don't have to get any righter than that. You can't. See, we get righteousness and holiness confused. But when you are righteous and you understand it, the devil can't take you. The devil can't take you down. Because you can stand against what you understand. See, you can stand against it when you have full knowledge. How right I am. I'm right with God. Mm. And you know what? According to the Bible, there is no condemnation. Look at Romans 5 real quick. Verse 1 and 2. Romans 5, verse 1 and 2. We we got we we going back to the basics. Why? Because it's necessary. Whenever we begin to have issues, I was always taught by my husband, you go back to the basics and see what you missed in your basics because you might be you might have loosed something or laid something down. He trained me that way and he trained all of us that way. Now whether we still live like that or not, that's on us. But he trained us that whenever you see a problem in your life, go back and look at the basics and make sure you are doing the basics. I hear my son talk a lot about in music and how that he practice his chords every single day. He has a routine of practicing. Why? Those are basics. They make up everything in music. You can't write a song without one of them. They're the foundation of music. So it's good to practice that. Amen? Are you there, Romans 5, 1 and 2? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. One translation says, therefore, since we are justified, we have been declared righteous and given right standing with God, but it's through faith. I got to believe that I'm in right standing. It's not about whether or not if I made a mistake yesterday or I, I cussed somebody out this morning. That's, see, that's not your righteousness. That's a misunderstanding about holiness. When we mess up, that is not your righteousness. That's a lack of holiness. And they are not the same. So when you mess up, you didn't get out of God because you messed up. But, you know, when I was coming up, every time you failed, they had you back at the altar getting saved again. I can't tell you how many times I probably got born again. Because I did enough stuff to feel like I had to go there. And I was always with a sin conscious mind. We're not supposed to be sin conscious. Woo, Jesus. See, the more you know about your right standing with God, you'll lose that sin consciousness. Mm. He says, you've been justified and made right standing with God through faith. So let us grab hold of the truth or the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed one. So we, we got to grab hold of it. Why? Because we've been so inundated with sin consciousness. So how do I do? I got to get up every morning and remind myself, you know what, girl, you're righteous. Until it erases. Say erase. The thought of being a sinner. You know, I was thinking since it was Father's Day, I remember the guys I used to date. I kind of remember their name, but I don't remember nothing about a kiss, have felt nothing. Because when Dale Davis walked in my life, he took away all of that. Excuse you. 
That's what Jesus does. We're supposed to get so acquainted that we lose the memory of what it feels like to be a sinner. I have no memory of the guys that I dated. You say, no, I don't, I don't have no, no feelings attached to none of their names. He erased that in the way he handled me. So I never longed for that past. Because he brought the substance to me that made me erase that. Man. Jesus brought all the substance to us that will make us lose our sin consciousness. But it's through faith that I must accept my right standing. See, most believers got this picture like this. I'm over here and God is over there. And it's incorrect because you are in him. You are in him. In fact, the word declares that you can't even be seen. The old you can't even be seen because you are hid in him. There is no trace of you to be seen. Mm. So when we see the old you leaking out seemingly, it's because you lack holiness, not righteousness, because Jesus made you right. Come on, say, Jesus made me right. And I'm right with God. And see, the devil can't take that from you when you know it. Just like somebody can't walk up and say, your name not Katie. Your name Susie. Now, you've been wearing that name for the last however. Don't, you don't even know her age. However. And for somebody to try to tell you that that's not your name. See, that you you she wouldn't fall for it, first of all. Why? She know that's her name. She got a birth certificate to back it up, a driver's license. She got credentials that say, I am who I say I am. Righteousness say you are right with God. And that's that's your credentials. You don't need another extra word to say I'm right. Jesus said, I made you right. And it wasn't nothing you did but to believe what I did. Right. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You didn't have to fight. You didn't have to, you didn't have to beg. You, didn't have to, you just had to believe what I did for you and is yours. And you're just as right as Jesus. Mm. Oh, my God. We spend a lot of our time wasting trying to figure out when I, when I make a mistake, when I fail. He says, get back up. I am your propitiation. I am the barrister. I am the lawyer between you and the accuser. I'm your defender. Nope, you can't say that. See, you get up and the devil say, oh, you know, you just, you just said that, and, you, and the, the Lord not going to love you. He lying to you. See, now, one of the things you got to understand about being right, you don't have to be accountable to the devil ever again. You are not accountable to his lies and his accusations. <laughs> They'll come to draw you out and make you walk in condemnation. That's what an accusation does. It make you feel uneasy and make you feel like you did a crime. But when you fail, Jesus said, you don't want to have to answer to me. Run to me. Amen. Run to me. And I will forgive thee. He says, and I will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I'm, I'm the cleanser. I'm the sweeper. I'm trying to help you because a lot of you struggle because you're trying to get money and you're trying to get this and you're trying to get that. You need to understand how right you are. Because everything about you is connected to your understanding of righteousness. It's connected to your righteousness. Romans 8.1. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So there's a catalyst. There, there, there's something you have to do. That means I'm in pursuit, according to Matthew 6, I'm seeking righteousness. He says, and that's spiritual. I'm seeking that which is spirit. He said, don't seek the flesh, but seek after the spirit. So my pursuit is to learn out how right I am. How right I am. Because if I don't know how right I am, when I do wrong, I'm going to feel like I can't go back to God. I got, I got to make it up to him. I got to do something extra. I, I, got, I, got, I got to give up something instead of just saying, Lord, forgive me. And really mean that from your heart. Now, we're not, is that excuse to sin? Absolutely not. We're not telling you to go out there and play Russian roulette with your life. But when you do fall, get back up because that didn't decrease your righteousness. And you know what? It's like knowing somebody knows something about you that you don't know and they take advantage of you. That's the way the devil is. He know that once you accept Jesus, you're already righteous. Ain't there nothing he can do about it. But he can make you be full of condemnation, which keeps you from understanding your righteousness. And the more you walk in condemnation, the less you understand about yourself. Oh, Jesus. When the Bible clearly says you don't have to be condemned. Didn't we just read that? It said there's no condemnation. So you don't have to be condemned. Okay, Pastor, what about if I just slept with somebody last night that's not my husband? You don't have to be condemned. You need to get up and learn some holiness. That's why you need to be in a teaching church. Because we'll help you grow. See, because that's important. Now, the more I understand my righteousness, condemnation will leave me. One translation says, no condemnation now hangs over the head of those who are in Christ Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Mm. I'm trying to find the one where it says, okay, yeah, there it is. That's the one I want. Look at Romans. See, because whenever the devil comes, I'm trying to give you ammunition. So when you go home, when the devil starts charging, try to lay charges at your feet. Look at Romans 8. Verse 30, then we're going to verse 33. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So God identified us as his own, then introduces us to our privileges and our responsibilities. Further, he makes us valuable and competent and ultimately grants us his divine splendor. That's what one translation says. So in other words, God had the plan. He predestinated us as to what we suppose. So he called us unto that. And then if he called us unto that, he justified us so we can do it. And if we justified, then he glorified us so we can have everything to come along with it. Oh, Jesus. Look at verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who, who going who gonna, to who gonna call you out and say you ain't righteous? It is God that justifieth. Who is it he that condemneth? Don't nobody have the power to condemn you. It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also make an intercession for us. Who in the world can accuse God's chosen people and call you guilty when God said you righteous? Nobody. I'm trying to help you see. So when you go home and, the, and you slip up and do something dumb, that you don't let the devil make you think you've lost out with God. One translation says, let the accuser launch his charges. They will fall harmless to the ground. The judge of all the world has set our feet upon the way of righteousness. There is no other court that can reverse 
what Christ has now done, and he is now seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. It is his voice which says all the time, Father, remember those for whom I died. So when he sees me, he sees me through the blood of Jesus. He no longer see me as that sinner. So when the father look at me, he doesn't see it an outcast or sinner a downtrodden or a, a goofy person. He doesn't see me that way. He doesn't see me what I used to be. He see me based on what Jesus did. All that I used to be doesn't exist in the mind and the eyes of God. So what's my, my goal for today is to learn holiness because I'm already right. I'm already right. And since I'm right, I can grow. Come on, stand to your feet.